yeah let's start the recording and let's just start as well uh from what you guys understood by the current week project and just to let you know this week's project is this week's project is contributed by Agludio and this company hires from us um, almost every time and they have already hired about 12 or 13 of our uh, graduates it's a company that's based in, in the uk in london uh, but also works everywhere else as well as the us they have also another big part and in, in different other parts of uh, the world <clears throat> and so basically they they like to give us challenge of their own challenge and based on that they want to select as well uh, they, they will normally interview and it's not a guarantee but they will interview then uh, the best submissions they would like to see and then interview you know candidates some candidates um to hire for them and the next week challenge is going to be very similar it, it's going to be on rag um, but by a company that's based in israel and then they want to select as well just um, similarly the best performance um, submissions they want to see and then they want to also interview and hire so just to let you know on that <clears throat> so i think i'm going to change the title so that it suits mostly the title for me should represent what is good for in your uh, cv and whenever you are going to be talking uh, to people what you have done the title is the the most that captures right so especially in reading materials the title represents everything so the current title I still just a suggestion it's not at all um, yeah I will change it probably after this um, like immediately after our but it's gonna be something like that it's uh, image and text generation um, or uh, it's it's not only generation but it, it has it is about generating understanding semantic image text uh, alignment basically that's mostly the, why, why don't i change it while i'm here and so this is probably what's something like that okay so let's hear uh so if you are aware just avail the colors that you are your video is on just in case that's uh and so let's start from anyone who wants to uh who understood the project and wants to explain in their own words so that they can understand it better Anyone who, has, who went through the challenge and wants to help us understand further? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, Abraham. Uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, so my basic understanding for this week challenge is uh, that uh, we'd be working on uh, a company that uh, called Adludo wants some uh, wants to generate visual uh, image visualizations visualizations or storytellings uh, from uh, text and uh, that will be more powerful and more uh, creative as well as uh, very capturing. So. Uh, we're basically doing, we're using this for uh, ads to generate uh, a visual ad. And that's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. what I got. 
Okay. And do you understand the type of tasks, things that needs to be done? Uh, I have tried to read a few. Uh, I, I see that we'll be making use of uh, machine learning uh, very much and uh, the concepts such as computer vision and uh, deep learning, I think, come into practice. Uh, I've put, I don't know much about them, but I think that's what we'll be working on for this week. Okay, good. Okay. Anyone want to add more details and different way of you know you don't have to only uh, explain but you can also have questions questions are more or less similar to explanations so asking the you know good questions is also i i, I assume you have q you know question formatting whatever like this advanced form of asking questions abraham uh, uh, a question that came up to me when I was just uh, skimming the document is, will we be training uh, a model uh, such that it recognizes or change it? Try it so it's a, a model like such as uh, LLMs that can work on images. Is that what we, we, what will we, yeah. we will be doing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's of course, uh, it is a matter of finding the first part is identifying and you know if you are generating lots of images normally that is that you would have you know you'd have to train yours but if it's about a couple of um, you know captured and generate images these days you can generate images with llms i mean it's not llms but visual models um, that are coupled with llms um, and that is basically dali or you know the diffusion um like that's basically mid journey type and others um in principle so that's where we have to if you give us a requirement by tomorrow we might spin some instances as well just like before so that people can work in groups even if they are working individuals they can work in groups in a certain machines if the machines required or for your requirement is um, more than what you have in your laptop Okay, Yvonne? Uh, I came through the document and I kind of have a question. It says here that we are using NLP and CV. So um, are we mixing two models into one? Because according to my understanding of LLMs, there are LLMs that are just for images and there are LLMs that are just for text. So kindly. Uh, no, no, I think, you know, Almost all models these days are multimodal in a sense that you give them a text and they generate image, right? Okay. Or you give them an image and they give you a text. That's called um, image summary or the other way is image generation. So, and then, then there are others that are working either, you know, that in, in, in combination. So in your case here, yeah, you are looking, the project is all about using CV normally, the computer vision, uh, which also in Python you have CV, the package, is normally to work with images, right? So, but yeah. at the same time, they are, if it's it's called single model, if it's just, if you are working only on one input, it's called single model. But if you are working in multiple inputs, that means image, video, uh, you know, sound and uh, text, then it's called multimodal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good questions and other uh, things. Because I, I mean, I can tell you, you will not that much understand as much if you are, if I just only go through, unless you generate questions. Vasile. Uh, hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, all right. So, from just from a, a brief reading of uh, the business objectives it looks like uh, we should take text descriptions and then turn it into like a detailed storyboard what is a storyboard um i, I don't know what a storyboard is that's a good question um, so a storyboard is basically when you are creating uh, anything like visual items 
then and multiple components then you need to create basically so first is you have assets you know you will you will hear more their assets and assets are different types they can be text they can be image they can be video they can be code right so these are assets that you probably would use compose then a story normally a story has a structure that means what comes first what comes second what comes next you know if you think of it it is anything that you you have done or you have seen uh, has a storyboard whether implicit or explicit so the, for example this week's project has a storyboard right in some way first assets are challenge second assets are you know tutorials and third assets are um so the non technical ones and then calendar programs in them and then announcement and then having gmits like you know just links and um as well as also just some emails that if needs to be sent or uh, slack message and all that you know if you want to really do is you basically have to arrange them first identify what needs to be done you know what what is in the story like in this week's story and then arrange them in time and in flow programming so that's that basically creates a storyboard but what makes them very different for creative tasks is that you know how you 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 start from something like it's called a campaign a brief and and a brand and then there are many ways to tell the same story in different ways right so you have to create a narrative at first like you know for example if nike comes with its shoe um and it's very whatever so one designer might think instead of you know like the simplest way is that okay you know i have a shoe and it's comfortable and that the other one is maybe you create a story that someone is um let's imagine that like whatever we have seen they they went to a shop and they saw something like where they're you know looking for and then you they basically saw you know the the shoe somewhere and they basically are happier right so or they just liked it the design and it's it's coming in their dream you know that's a narrative that you just created right it's a very maybe not that creative now but you can think of it like for other things like um a story that you just generate purely just its first arc the arc of the story and then you then generate so normally you are given that one for this project but then you generate along that so what are the sequences in this story what assets do i need do i need a video here a text there you know and what is my start beginning what is my middle what is my ending you know so you basically and then you have time as well so normally in the storyboard you might not worry about time like the amount of time that you have but you arrange them in such a way that you know here are assets this would go it would be nice to, this come this comes after this or this comes before this and so this is the general concept of storyboard is that clear so the narrative defines the basically the the tree and the different assets and how they get combined you can think of them them as leaves in that story and that's in that arc um, yeah yeah it's clear so, and a board um, a board is basically in in a way normally what you put all your assets together uh okay so is it like uh is it like you would have a static way of putting them uh, for example you, you talked about let's see first this comes and then next this comes is that going to be dynamic or is that going to be static or uh, or that like yeah um so you have seen they they asked you in the bonus a dynamic one like so probably task one task two image composition task three building the storyboard then there is this one optional you know in the optional part so this one is when you want to make it dynamic in a sense based on it's called a multi pass concept so with narratives branching narratives or multiple user interaction passes that means when one clicks actually something left or right so clicks are now assets right 
you say like now the user is asked this question and they click something, you know, right or left. Now, if they, if they go right, you show them this one. If they go left, they go. So that's called like dynamic. So you are actually, it's the same as in, you know, designing a survey. You can have a, a very predefined survey as well as, or you can have um, less, like basically just known predicted uh, elements. All right, thanks. Yeah. So I'm just going to share. So you, you, you see my screen now. So here is in part like cartoons, like, you know, a story, you know, so this is basically cold dark nights on Tipton Lane. Everyone was fast asleep, you know, and then you have assets. That means you're showing stars and moon and, and nights uh, representing in, in a house. And then cut 10 cuts hid underground planning their next heist, right? And then you have cuts in, in the thing one. And then Roy, the leader of Ninja cuts, explain the problem the group is facing, you know? And then you have like Tim, his sidekick suggests a heist at the Queen's Palace enough food to last forever and then the planning of the heist and ray calls all whatever and then night of the heist so as you, as you can imagine just storyboard is basically it's a combination of you have now the text the image if you have a video video if you have a story but the, the story of the arc probably is this one the strike of the ninja cuts right so that's the title that's basically the arc and what you invent or you know what is and I hope that that makes it clear. And you can see many, many, many things are done, usually animations or ads or anything that as creative usually is done through storyboard. And, and things like that. You know, it's like you basically have assets and things. And this one will be now once it's finalized, do all the components and arranged in a board in such a way that it's visible. The time, the time series, it could be like, Dynamic means, okay, maybe from here we go that way. It's a much more complex. Okay. Anyone with now any other question or any, hopefully, uh, Basile, that your question is answered. Yeah. Anyone else? If not, then I will go. But I think if you ask, it's the right way. Abraham. Hi, hi, Abdul. Hi. So uh, I, I I was just looking at the challenge documents and uh, I kind of got the uh, understanding how the LLM is going to be uh, implemented in the project, but uh, I don't understand the uh, machine learning part, how it's going to be uh, involved or implemented in the challenge. Maybe if you can. Yeah, just no, give but us it, I think it's that's a good question because that's really you are, you're asking multiple questions at the same time. I think most people now are name confused, right? Machine learning is, LLM is machine learning. You know, AI is machine learning. It's just new terminologies overtake so that, you know, the other ones are um, much more sexier. So it's better to really know LLMs just are learning. They are machines that learn, right? And then deep learning is machines again to learn, right? So now in, in our case, there are components that you are generating some things um, and some things you are learning from the patterns. So for example, they gave you, if you go to the data, they give you different types of data. So this is, this archive features an assets folder, which at the same as the name implies, contains images used to construct the creatives. Within these folders, subfolders correspond to a different creative project that means it's already the, you know, the storyboard has been done for them, you know, before they are creative means just basically an ad that has gener generated. So the difference between ad and creative, creative is multi-component things, but it's just really means ad, the ad units, you know, and so each containing variant, various assets inter uh, integral to the creative. So 
these assets are codes, you know, uh, images and uh, stories, and you know, the kind of uh, the codes actually capture normally the interaction because uh, Adludio creatives are actually run inside them. There is a JavaScript, and they are embedded in a small mini game, like in a browser. They have their own, um, uh, let's say, engine that is running them. So the JavaScript code actually is interpreted by that engine. And so if you look at that, so this is basically what to learn. Because the first part on, on anything is you have the past data and you want to learn from that how it's done. So the machine learning component comes here where you are actually learning the pattern. What, you know, what are, what are the, the key patterns that Adudio creatives, you know, they probably, I don't know how many there are, um, so you probably would see that how many they are, I think in the JSON, they would probably, um, there should be a JSON, maybe that might tell you. So, so this is the earlier, as I was saying, the concept is, the concept in this case, the title is escape challenge teaser. Implementation, frame one is the ad begins with a suspense, frame two, whatever, frame three, an explanation. And then asset suggestions, frame one, frame two, whatever. Um, and so that's basically it. And then you start from another, uh, somewhere, then you start new. Like, so basically just like if we do somewhere it ends and then it starts another one. So. Then if you count how many there are, probably, I mean, it's a JSON, so I can't count, but you can see that maybe there are hundreds or something. And this tells you, you are learning from, from that. So the machine learning component is to learn, you know, as an example, if you are, you, if you're not using your own machine learning, other way of like, you know, uh, for example, Scikit and others, you, you, you probably could learn the pattern as well using LLM. But normally that's expensive and it's not useful. You know, you run out of ideas quickly. So you're you're, you're going to be learning some form of machine learning, some form of I don't know uh, pattern. So and then the LLM is sometimes to analyze. So the LLM is you can consider it now as a tool that it it helps you to semantic. That's why I mentioned here semantic. It's everything that you don't know. I mean, it makes like colors whatever you can identify them easily using cv a package for example in python but their semantic part and sometimes their segmentation you you know that for the segmentation you might use yolo and others to run and yolo can run also on your own pc and um, and so you are mixing different things for different uh, roles but the machine learning in general is to learn from you know what is performing what is good what is repeating how are assets combined with stories? How is, so the LLMs in part comes here at, at different niche places, connections. They help you, you know, like humans, they, they understand the semantic part, part of something. They, you know, or they can explain the image, what it is for, and then the text, and then you kind of create like that, right? So it is this combination of deep learning, normally what is usually called, you know, LLMs are deep learning, but when you use them deep learning as this name normally it means you are running like yolo is deep learning or uh unates architecture is also a deep learning things like that that you run to be able to get something like you know to either generate the next one or uh, classify or something and the machine learning normally you also something very similar you either classify or you are you know you kind of do some form of uh, clustering uh, some form of identification but usually for learning some kind of sequences uh, stuff. So they're all the same, except just whenever we, we say machine learning, we mean we're learning patterns in a simpler form. When we are saying deep learning, we are saying we are normally running some deep learning uh, neural network to do something. It's either image identification, it could be object segmentation or object classification. And when we think of LLMs, we are much more thinking of semantic process, including, you know, from a text generate image or from image get the text. Um, so anytime we are exchanging semantic thing, we, we, we think of LLMs.
Does that explain? Abraham? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So you see, like these kind of questions are allowing us to deep dive in 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 concepts that usually are not easy. If I were just explain, I will not explain that. So okay. So I hope you can ask questions, but in the meantime, I will just go through for the sake of time. So the business objective must should be clear that Adludio has been almost always, you know, for since 2014, has been running uh, this very uh, interactive mobile driven. So by mobile driven, it's normally means it uses sometimes the sensors to do some, you know, gamify advertisements, and they they are known for very high creative. Uh, advertisements so and then they serve their really big brands Chanel BMW Mercedes and others and so they basically create that and 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 um, so in their motivation so what is saying is that these technologies LLM and you know the, uh, kind of grows in deep learning that is allowing us uh, to do some intricate processing and interpretation of data facilitating the creation of detailed dynamic content that bridge the gap between textual concepts and visual storytelling. Because now semantic, this is basically the key, um, that is basically saying the semantic part is now bridged. And the integration of these technologies not only simplify the translation of complex ideas into tangibles, uh, uh, tangible visuals, but also enhance creativity and efficiency in content generation, right? So basically, Another keyword is is here, and um, you know I'm just much more highlighting so that so now the goal of this task is to harness these capabilities. So you know that that gaps the, the you know that fills the gap between textual and visual storytelling, and the translation of complex ideas into tangible visuals, as well as uh, for a goal of efficiency in content generation. Your task is basically to to use these capabilities of the new era, the GPT era, you can call it, for to create advertisement concepts and assets in, into detailed storyboards. So, uh, and therefore, this transformation aims to visually depict the narrative flow and the user interaction within advertisements. So this, um, so if I just, uh, instead of that, and if I highlight it by a much, more so this is the trans this transformation process aims to visually depict the narrative flow maybe this so that is the case so you are exactly then following that narrative creating the narrative flow including user interaction within uh, advertisements so maybe just this one then i can do this okay so the collection of so um Arudio offers its client a suite of services you can think of collection of comprehensive briefs design interactive advertisements distributes these creatives using sophisticated real-time bidding algorithms and optimize the creative design and targeting process for you know using machine learning so but if they can get a product or they build something automated with all these technologies uh, then they basically uh, be able to offer clients, you know, generating, compelling and very dynamic ads um, for them. And that's the, the key, okay? So your task is basically to help them design storyboards uh, from assets, from ideas, uh, from complex ideas with assets um, and, and brand and briefs uh, starting from them and uh, generating storyboards that can be then synthesized easily by, let's say, the, the creative team or another automation to create ads dynamically. Okay, so this is helpful so that you can understand the bigger picture of what is a creative and in how it's you know how it's defined. There are many you know multiple jargons within them, and you can read there, but it's basically that. These definitions normally are very helpful. Add frame, add formats, concepts. You know, this concept earlier you saw in here that a concept is basically just the way the title of the, the you know the beginning of the ad, right? So this is normally is called the theme 
or basically what defines the backbone of your your creative because from that you can already this is then that if you give this one the concept escape challenge teaser for example for a designer now they can interpret this in a number of ways and one way of interpreting that is that the, they might say okay the ad begins with a, a suspenseful animation of a lego city with a tagline your city no limits and the countdown timer that basically is doing and then interaction type will be a tag you know and then next frame is gonna be frame two and then the duration that it will go the countdown time time will be five minutes and then the frame two but so this is basically the finished product normally you would synthesize the whole story then you break it down into something and then you, you you get the key components including you know what is the interaction type what should be the tagline and things like that so you design that frame frame by frame you design okay so normally so that concept is the the very part and then add frame is just as i said frame one frame two is a creative composed of several segments so it's very simple and add format is now it's not only you can't just you're not free they are these ads are going to be placed inside either a mobile and inside, they can be inside an app you know things like that you have to then take into account that element as well that format creative is the overall everything of course um that contain you know that that has that is made up uh, frames with a concept and in a in a certain format and um combined right so normally this would help you so there, if you break the whole, the overall uh, Adludio ads and, you know, banners, for example, are ads, but they, they have only one, you know, they end up just only because they don't have interaction. Whenever we say banners, it means that creatives that are, or ads that doesn't have any interaction. So they're basically just a post, right? While a dynamic ad normally within Adludio, there are two things. So what, what first you have to get to the client, the one who sees the user, and once the very first thing the users see, you call in Alludio, it's called engagement screen, right? So the engagement screen is a combination of something. It, it has interaction for engagement. It has a tagline, uh, uh, instruction to do something, right? And some other contents and background and color and all that that's combined. And when the engagement happens, this goes into the post engagement uh, part. The post engagement normally is what what is the very what what contains the entire ad, like maybe it's a video, maybe it is something. So that part, the post engagement one, is then you know it can be a video, it can be another play, it can be animation, it can be physical, whatever you want. And then that when that post engagement finishes, there is usually what's called the click screen or the call to action. So this is normally leads you into conversion. Because most of the time, conversion means you want the ad to end up with buy this is a conversion, for example, or, you know, um, visit, uh, subscribe to our YouTube. That's another conversion. So you have that. So this is, for example, in this case, okay, after this, you are saying we are hiring, apply now. So apply now is this, for example, what leads you to the website uh, to apply. And I think this is very good to see and important to see what Adludio ads are. So this is, for example, um, one actually running, currently running campaign in there uh, that's synthesized. As you can see, this is called the engagement. The engagement uh, screen, the one that I was showing, this one is what is this one. This is the engagement. As you can see, it's telling me, click something, there is an instruction, there is something like the brand, whatever. And then it says, drag your favorite shade to be always ready. Okay, then maybe, the, you know, you might, this is actually poorly done, but I can, for example, then drag this and then put it in the hair. And what happens is that a video starts. I'm just going to close that. And you can try three of their uh, ads that they are, they already are running, it's currently running. And as you can see, now this is a different type of ad that says swipe the postcard because this is the engagement screen and then you can do and as you can see the ad format this ad format is very smaller compared to the previous one and it's much more uh, suited maybe for a mobile things like that 
And if I do like as it suggests like that, then it comes. In this case, it's not a video. It basically says, oh, maybe it's a video. So it's some kind of uh, part and the sound. You don't hear it maybe, but the sound and, and it's just play. Okay, hopefully that's clear. And the data they gave you earlier, as I saw, the very zipped entire of what these apps are made of, you know, all their assets, their description, their story, whatever, whatever, and sample concepts with assets, size description. Uh, so this is basically exactly also for your training to learn from it. Uh, the JSON file, the one I showed earlier, details everything. And then the category descriptions are this basically, again, um, the text, this will help you learn more. I think we have already, we have given you last time. So this is background image, logo, call to action, icon, product image. So these ones are actually the different categories that can be, that can exist inside uh, inside an, a creative. So, so that you can name your categories. You can add as well, if you want, you can add your cata more categories to suit you. But this is what they are using uh, at the moment. Okay, and a storyboard examples to offer insights into the standards of deliverables. Aludio presents to its client the selection of samples. Storyboards is provided. These examples, um, you know, you you would find them as well. So you would find the storyboards that are. Uh, I think we we can ask them. Maybe this is what they didn't fill us. So just basically, they should give us a couple of storyboards, unless it's included inside the zipped folder. So that's what we are asking them. Okay. Um, and I think the most important part from knowledge, you have to know this is a very sensitive data. So probably normally we would ask uh, that uh, uh, a non-disclosure agreement so that you don't share this data with us. Given that we are going to ask everyone to sign that non-disclosure agreement so because this data is a private data and needs to be taken care of, not shared to anyone or inside, uh, you know, where uh, public sources. So you must ensure, so, and this is really important, okay? So you have to learn about data privacy and security and ethical use of data um, here. And if you use MLOs um, or uh, I think noise, and I think it's uh, weights and noise, so that's basically uh, or weights and bias. If you use so so that you can actually document all of your work, your machine learning work, you know you you should be able to document them. That's called ML ops. So you should be and then if you are documenting data transformation, you can use DVC or Kedro, um, that actually then you have a data uh, versioning. So normally you should think of model versioning, data versioning, and um, and code versioning. And some, some like MLflow helps you in, in, in a machine learning, basically management, both mostly data and um, uh, data and models. They help you version those. MLOps is the general name for that. Okay. And the tasks, the instructions is basically, so it's, you're gonna be using machine learning, as I said, based on the very things, the many things you are given, you should learn patterns. And then you should also be able to either grab from somewhere images or text generations um, uh, using LLMs and, and combine that with you know, your learning and basically the semantic layer will be the LLM. And then you also have to write codes and you know, basically MLOs uh, to automate the storyboard creating process. So that means you will have some place where you can actually, it could be a front end at, uh, in a front end sense, you basically synthesize exactly like before, you synthesize your, your air elements. But um, ultimately, it can be API based that from anywhere people can generate, like, okay, they give you inputs and you give them a sequence of like uh, slides. You know, basically it can be a slide or it can be just a, a front end that, that helps you to basically put things so that people can see. So that's just a simple React app can, can, can be that as well. Or, you know, not only React, but also even if uh, Streamlit that basically puts images here and there with descriptions and text that can also act. So anything that you know uh, will help in that one. So the very first is, uh, of course, 
even if it's task one, I'm going to be very much re reworking this one. Task one should always be, you know, learning this and testing. And it's not about text generation, but it will contain also learning. We already know how to text generate and image generate using um, the API. So we will provide uh, a new, if they are expired, new um, API keys, but use them sensitively. Just don't really, please. We're going to, you know, we know, we, we look for every person who's generating. We look. You should anything that's useful, do it. We're not gonna be banning you, but make sure you know to use it as your own money as well. So you know we, we don't want to put caps. Like I mean, the overall caps we have, but per person we don't put it. So use it as as on need. Don't be afraid. Like you know, don't be too much scared, but at the same time, don't be also unnecessarily um, you know waste them because they are resources and we're paying for everything. Um, okay, so that one. So in this element is basically uh, that, and but I'm going to change task one. Will be much more reviewing that, learning the actually the machine learning component of it. Uh, you know, preparing your environment for identifying colors, identifying texts, and uh, learning and data structuring. Task one actually. So this should be task two, and um, task one should be. Um, where And then um, basically, I, So oh, let's imagine just for now that that would be, and in here, the models would be uh, YOLO. Um, you can use uh, maybe greater than V8. I mean, there are multiple YOLO versions and scikits, like clustering. You may need to do some clustering. Um, and then some unit structure and some others we will, we will list um, part. okay and then you basically from your strategy the most important part is that your workflow strategy and from that whatever needed um, you would hire you know you would structure so this task one task two task whatever might not be currently well structured so it's just only a, a guideline so it gives you a hierarchy but actually you know it it you might you might need to based on your strategy you might need to try this and that but another part that i forget is that so this time it's actually the group work uh, policy is you can choose you can choose to work in a group so that you can achieve the maximum uh, result or if you want, you can also choose to work individually. All we ask you is that you, uh, there is this, when you click this one, you get, uh, you, you definitely should have access. You, you have this, so start filling by identifying either a group or by belonging to a group or by being individual. But everyone has to list here their name, their emails, and then 
you know their full names just so that for so here for example if it's like you are the first one to mention you can just say one um or here also you are the first one one but it's just an id that you know whatever continuing the that the, and then your email so that we identify you uh, all the time especially normally when you get submission it's by email we identify so we need that name and the full name just so that we can quickly browse who is what in which group so if in a group for example these emails would be a collection of you know, email one email two like that you know names like that in individuals it would be row by row so therefore and next if we add another column just so that we we add uh, we need additional information you will you will provide that but for now all we need is that you have to fill this before you start the work you know uh, you can work individually or or um, in a group okay and so basically yeah the you know once you identify and the strategy how you flow and your work what you explore then of course you learn how to uh, understand and compose like basically means you, you will learn how to generate an image as well as text you already know that so it, it's not but control you have to control what you want to generate and how and all that is probably the key that you are so you have to write write a code that really helps you control what color what item whatever it's not a general thing it's an ad you know ads cannot just be garbage stuff so you, you have to maybe you don't need to generate the whole image you might really generate only one thing an element you know like maybe you have a background image on that background you might you may want to generate only you know some some something right so don't try to generate everything but it's a prompt engineering is there um also from understanding translating from the objective the concept maybe in the in the text generation is exactly where you generate concepts based on uh, uh the inputs usually the inputs are briefs and uh, brand related information and so from that you have to generate so that being able to that's a purely llm space as well as also for that supportive even just texts that describe about an image so that next you can use those ones to generate actually an image things like that you couple that generation component will come there and once you have a good grasp of that and um uh, module of that then you are trying to synthesize the story in the way that you saw frame by frame maybe you decompose now from team to frames and then within the frames you know key taglines key text and key image and an interaction in that in that frame um, and basically it's and so you can get some information there and once you do that it's basically of course you you want to visualize all of that in such a way that so that's basically as a simple you know simple web app that to help you uh visualize all of that okay and so the the whole process is conceptualized here there will be tutorials um and so maybe that's a more detailed um uh, description about or maybe other uh, we will ask I, I might just be doing it as well or so we will confirm this one and then there will be um, also I've asked a couple of people uh, from there Milky for example who prepared so they can he can tell you about the because they work Milky has used to be uh, I think batch four as well graduates and he's now leading their their generation at least deep learning part together with others and so he might give us the challenge involved especially because there are so many details about color space you know sound image space and you know text space uh, and how to identify and so all of the challenges he might give us and then we will schedule more more uh, tutorials and also there might be by the CTO of Adludio we might we might he might give as well uh, a public talk on Thursday so and the delivers the delivers uh, deliverables are the same report and the coach and uh, in on Wednesday again the final everything by Saturday Okay. And here are references. As I said, we will probably have some uh, instances to help you, but I think most codes can still be worked by your um, from your computer. But those struggling can let us know, and we can help there as well. Okay, so let me stop there, and let me see if there are questions. 
First is, was it is clear? Second is, how do you feel? And third is, anything else? I mean, it seems that the group is going week by week, not that proactive. I don't know. I mean, is that just me? I am too fast today? It feels everyone what prefers just to not say much. And I, normally the expectation is that over time, people really fight to talk. You know, this one is going exactly the opposite. What are we doing wrong? Ekram. So like, hello everyone. Uh, I think like I have got the basic understanding of the challenge for this week, but uh, I just, I'm just a little bit confused about the outcome. Like it will be good if you can specify like the, out the real outcome after the challenge. Uh, like for example, in our a previous week like during the group work we were expected to do like a rag, a rag pi pipeline that generates a, a telegram ad so like what are we expected in this like is that the model that uh, like converts the yes. text the storyboard. into the, the storyboard the storyboard the generated is, storyboard yes so the storyboard that contains all the components that forms a story exactly earlier as i saw you know the text the interaction you know the type of the json document will give you that so if you you know if you don't visualize if you just generate the you know the challenge like the um, the json that i showed you that ca that can be an output so that's the very you know i'm just going to share again so that you can see what i mean okay so uh no this one this one so if you think this one, so this is one, uh, I don't know where it ends, so uh, another concept. So it, it, it must finish into another concept. Uh, yeah, so probably here, up to here, right? So this is, so from here, So into, an, into this, so this component is telling you this, this is basically you can visualize, right? You, you know, it's like you have the concepts, like, you know, so now uh, this is an output. What they're looking for, this is a storyboard, right? Okay. So you have, within your storyboard, you have the, the concept, the implementation, you will have three frames, and then each are then it's explained, and then uh, the assets that are involved in 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 different frames. You know, for example, in the first frame, it's background animation and tagline your city, no limits, uh, blah blah. And then in frame two, the video clips, and then in frame three, like that. So now, video clips in itself is since composed of, of course, multiple frames. But you know, here what we are talking is the storyboard frame more than the actual frame of the 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 creative right and then okay. um so basically that that's what it is and so i think each component of on um on so this one is for example so this is in frame one like a background a lively a much more description of each assets that are so you have video clips so there's tagline background animation and now you can you can specify in more detail of what frame one is for example it's background it's logo you the the tagline didn't change but you probably uh, specify in which font in which color whatever it has to right tagline is your city no limits appears in bold colorful font capturing the frames message and the campaign's overarching theme interactive element a tap to begin so this is another one and in frame to the same and then another asset that explains you know what this you know uh, what it does so this is basically again some component um you so understanding this so the output is basically expected in this way okay yeah so by learning from these outputs you know exactly the format of the output and it's about you know how do you display this N normally the assets you, because you are generating so for example you know the logo so the logo is the image so you don't need to generate this is assets given tagline you probably have 
have generated this using LLA. Interactive elements, it's probably you have selected. So there are, the Adludio supports a number of interactive elements and you selected that based on suitability, right? And background, you probably have to identify what kind of background image should be. This is an asset. And the assets are specified, I'm sure, somewhere. Um, I don't know, like this, they, they can be, this can be a different variation. So the, I think I understand now. So these are different variations. So for, for the same, so you can have variation one, variation two, variation three. So you will understand the data as you explore it, but these are basically a uh, different variation of the same thing. So that means you're not only you created one storyboard, but different variations that might be, um, you know, so basically that's why here, for example, the interactive element is tab to begin, but in the next one, there my interactive element is uh, a large colorful button, right? So this is called variations. And so you can create your storyboard in multiple variations. Normally, that's what it is. Okay. I hope that's clear. So the output is this one. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, then Abraham. Uh, okay. So uh, do we depict or choose one concept and then uh, choose to uh, display it in three variations or and yeah, so, of so you're, you're not you're not solving for one thing. You're generating your it's a, a strategy and a full pipeline that will work. Now, if I give you another uh, company that you should generate, right? So it's not it's not like you are just generating for one thing, for one item, for one company. It's the company is selling an advertisement company. It it has many clients and it wants to use your technology to do this right so like you basically can specify in, in the input you know how many variations do you need or maybe just you create one and they can tap something and then you create some variation from that or you can allow them to edit maybe a, one component of the storyboard maybe they they like this and then they want to edit maybe just the frame or the background or something so in principle what you are trying is of course the first part is you create something that given an input a brief and a logo and other assets you generate a storyboard you can regenerate that for anything so it's a full pipeline you're trying to create is that clear yes i understand okay manuel uh, hi everybody uh so the, the the project is not clear for me yet. So the first part is you know using palms or you know something to generate this storyboard, but then there is a client that takes his inputs and displays it so that the user can interact with it. That is the general gist of it, or yeah, am I, I missing mean, something? I think it is like there's no this and that. I mean you you're breaking this you've just developed the system and someone puts an input and and you determine what that input is normally it's a brief so that means you, you know you can't generate out of a tin air some ad right it is for a certain company with a certain asset and with a certain brief what are they advertising brief means what are they advertising for right so yeah, yeah. that's it and now you basically take those ones and you run your code with that input, and then the input generates a story, an element within that story that are like as you know, you it should consider the different assets. Your very first should be that every asset is already given. You know, you, to simplify everything, you can say, except the story and the texts, assets are actually given. Other asset by assets in this case, images are given. So you're basically you can start from the what they have that, you know you can try to regenerate for one of their creative they gave you example creatives take one and you say i'm going to generate that automatically that means i have all the assets all i need is to generate a new story so i have this story as a start but i want to generate it 
had I not have that story, can I generate a story? And can I place them order by order? Is that, does that make sense, Fanny? Uh, if you just ask, yeah. it's important. It's, it's about really just like anyone else, just, it's just, you have an input and you are generating, and finally, it sounds very easy. You can generate the whole that JSON. You can generate it actually with LLM. But of course, for, with, and you can make it a rag problem. Okay, because everything is uh, a text. I can generate every text. What I'm going to give it is I'm going to write a very good prompt and I'm going to extract the relevant context from assets that are given and, um, you know, everything. I give it as a context. And then I ask LLM to generate the entire flow, you know, just in JSON format. That's one mm -hmm. simple strategy. Yeah. But you know, ultimately, because there are so many components to change, it, the algorithm is about that, you know, maybe determining the color of your image and uh, such that it's, you know, the next thing that is along it suits by that. What should influence? What is context in this case? You know, color is context, objects that are given context. Is that human thing that is given or not? So uh, then maybe image analysis is important. The image size, the image format, you know, does image have text or not? You know, things like that. Do we have video? Do we have, so it's about finding, understanding all. So that's why the first part is asset analysis. So whatever asset you are given, you should analyze and put it as a context. Mm. Okay, so let me summarize from what you told me so far. So we have the data in the assets. So from the assets, you gather more data and you provide the context or you know the same data dashboard of the uh, story that I use. Then after that, the storyboard yeah, I mean, has to be yeah. able to be input after that, even is that the what the storyboard what the storyboard must be be able to be edited also is that also? i mean yeah in, in principle story. if you support if you support that yes if not you know it's like a mid journey if anyone plays if you don't like something you can regenerate that particular item or you can enrich that one that's called control thank you aim to be to, to start simple and then provide more advanced in a way it's almost always the same you know the good strategies to aim very simple and build layer by layer the complexities because there are many many for example interactions you don't choose what interaction you have to use you have to know what interactions are available in a video because you have to still generate that interaction using maybe another you know if you think of it it's like you are trying to like if you are generating an essay from LLM, normally what you are, LLM is acting now as a student. If you are now generating a storyboard, LLM, you know, the combination of LLM, machine learning, deep learning, whatever, is you are using it as a creative director. So that means somebody who designs something, story. So the persona that you are trying to create is that one. A person who really under, is creative and knows some software like Adobe and others that edit something, synthesizes something, they are also creative enough to come up with a title based on the assets inputs, and then they put everything together and in a structured way called the storyboard, and they show it to people. So you're trying to create, recreate that one automatically. So basically, design a creative director, you know, in an algorithm. Basically. Yes, that's what's. Is exactly that. Yeah, Thank so you. there are multiple components there. And you can really forget all those components to simplify and then just generate a text. That's valid, but you know that will not work. Like, I mean, this is too complex. But you should try that one at first, maybe to understand it and how to guide the LLM to edit each part of the text and all that. Okay. okay. Melat. Uh, hi, Yabu. Hi. So, hi. my my question is, uh, 
if we were to uh, approach this problem as a rug system, as you said earlier, I mean, uh, we would just have to write prompt to it. Uh, but uh, uh, basically, my question is, uh, it's not just with the rug thing, but uh, how does the uh, deep learning come in, in hand with this project? I mean, because you know, deep learning, all that are tools. So you want to understand, maybe just, so at first you might think, okay, I'm, I'm going to have an image. I want to understand what is inside that image. I'm going to send it to Dali and, and Dali gives me in text. But now you have millions of hundreds of uh, images. You know, that would be very costly. So instead you might have another deep learning that just segments for you. And so you would use that one because it's cheaper, it runs in your PC. Okay, so basically we're using it to analyze uh, analyzes the image, I mean, the assets, right? Yeah, Is that including, yeah, it's a classify, analyze, identify, and all that, exactly. Okay, so what we do is we give the asset to this um, LLM and then, I mean, the model, and then it, it will analyze yeah. the asset for us. Uh, and then we're going to be using this analysis in order to generate this, the storyboard. I mean, to get a yes. better context of the uh, the image. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, the simplification is you can put it that way. You can simplify, it. but it's it's nothing. You have to know. No one is going to construct something just out of purely like okay, one strategy. It is playing, experimenting with like what mm -hmm. works, what's good. But it's there. Most people, it doesn't fit the you know. It feels too complex because you, you want to understand it in one way. There is like, it's true for all projects, normally you are given that one way approach. That means, okay, yes, do this and do that. And that is one, right? But where you would use deep learning, normally is for its relevance part. So now the strategy guides you where to use it. So normally you might need to classify, right? That one, maybe just you can use deep learning. Maybe you can segment, for example, position you know there are melt you know if you identify the different elements in a storyboard first it's just elements right okay you know uh, what you know color is one which color should like, let's imagine you have just uh, a tree you want to place in the art now how many components does that first is the size of the tree second is the color of the tree and of course the texture of the, the tree and four is, is whether it's animating or not. And the other one is in which location do you put it? On the top right, in the middle, in the left. You see now how many parameters are there just for that tree to work? And even I didn't mention whether you need a description for the tree or not, whether the tree um, you know, has what kind of tree it is actually. Is it you know, like a, a cartoon tree or is it actually a normal tree? You know, so as you get in, all of this needs to be determined. So that's why you need to understand the relationship between, you know, the assets that you are given, their location, their color, their structure, and you have to capture all of them. And you can try to do that with DALI, but even the text itself, you don't know, right? The text doesn't tell you where, the location and stuff. So you have to standardize maybe okay locations maybe top right whatever i only want in a certain word you know so in that sense okay maybe you might say okay what are the components of uh, what are the objects visible in this image you might send it to open ai okay now maybe then right now you can say okay where is the now it gives you a tree a child a chair and then a sky and something now you might say what is the you know you can either ask in the first prompt the colors and others or later maybe like okay where is now the tree and and give me in an answer like this top right or whatever or you can use yolo for example yolo is a model a deep learning model that segments maybe yolo gives you a coordinate where things are where objects are maybe that's because in one go yolo gives you all the objects that can be identified or you might use amazon uh api that does object segmentation. They are much cheaper than probably sending it to LLM. Maybe you can compare price and, and then check. So, and then it's all about knowing 
binding all these elements. For each element, you need different components, and then synthesizing them based on the story. And now, if you were the one to edit it by hand, of course, you could have just done it, okay, like this color to that color. But even the automation part of how then you place all of this in which order is also another algorithm. That's where machine learning is. Because how do you then synthesize them? Maybe again, you can use LLM to say, okay, I have these components and I'm going to create this story. Give me a story that places all of this in, in time and space and use the space of this and that. So maybe that's another prompt as well. But you choose which one to do. Is that, does that give you an idea? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. And if, if you understand it, if you want to try to summarize what I just told you, and then share it so that others can, others can iterate, that would be great. And it can be you, it can be others, but just would be nice to summarize. Right. It will help you understand it or ask more questions because that was a good question. Okay. Anyone else? I think we are way over time, so we can actually stop it here, but I hope it's clear. If not, just ask many questions. And in the afternoon, there will be Milky joining. So the afternoon tutorial, don't miss it because you will talk about challenges involved uh, in this, in, in creating this. Okay, Rudolf. Yeah, Yareban. Uh, thank you for your, yeah, thank you for your explanation. I'm just want to put out my uh, understanding so far, uh, as you were asking, uh, Okay, so from my understanding, when we have a, an, a, an input, this input can be a, a, an image or a text. We can send we can send that input to Dali, and then it will generate an asset for us. And that asset can be an image or a text. And according to the asset, we will uh, will analyze this asset asset by catching uh, by catching. Uh, the component, the component can be a, a location, color, uh, uh, whatever uh, that will be involved in the uh, advertisement that we want to, to generate. And then uh, we'll use these uh, this components in our prompt that we will create to generate finally uh, Maybe an image or yes, not maybe an image or to generate an image that we will uh, that will be like a uh, our 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 story board. So this is what I have understood so far. Mm. Uh, I think the pro the problem is that there's so much things that are not aligned. So um, you don't just generate so when you need you generate but not generate everything assets are given as an input as well so assets means in this case they, they give you image to use video to use and and uh, some things to use for example logo is an asset that is given and and other things right so a brief so normally the input is assets and briefs briefs are basically what describes what kind of product it is about. Okay, so the brief okay. and then the company information is given. Now, your final goal is to, there are many elements in this. Now, from the assets, you might need to enrich the assets. So the first thing to, uh, to generate, you know, the asset might be that you, um, so, you might want to understand your assets, right? So that you you know what you have to start with. So that's called analysis, asset analysis. Okay? So you analyze your assets yes. to understand them. And then whatever is missing, you might, for example, say, okay, now you generate a story. So you have a, an asset, but you know you generate a story. A story is basically maybe the concept. Maybe first you, you really search for identifying the best concept. A concept is a title for your story. You know, once it could be like 
uh, Cinderella um, something, you know, Cinderella's um, uh, or the Beauty and the Beast for this product, you know, something like that. So that's a title for for your for your uh, story. Now, then you start generating your story and what needs to inside. Now, you have your assets, but you might require, for example, a tagline. You might not have an asset for a tagline, so you generate a tagline. Maybe, you know, the color choice. You can either choose color or you can generate color. So, so a missing elements you generate. Because, because you have a story, you are generating things and editing things to make sure automatically you generate a good storyboard. Because by the end of this process, you want to end up with a storyboard. Is that clear? So it's your understanding is okay, but the order is like that. First, you analyze. Second, you start generating a concept based on that. And then, then you start feeling like your storyboards one step by step, frame by frame. How many frames do you use? Um, and all that. So you then in each frame, what do you need to do? And you start feeling that. And th so the whole pipeline is to build that automatically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think le let's let's stop here, and then people, you you can iterate. Milky will be there. Prepare for more questions, and because he can tell you he's working on it, so he has more information. And then after that, if there are some things not clear, we can talk as well tomorrow. But I would want people to really proactively now go there. And feel your, you know, whether you are in a group, you are going in a group or not. Determine now and write it, and uh, prepare so that you know we have a short time. But this is something, you know, a good opportunity for everyone um, if you do a good work. Okay, so thanks everyone, and uh, we can stop it here.